Um, thank you for joining me tonight. Um, I want to talk about what ha uh, the ep the epiphany I had uh, yesterday about myself. Um, I recently st started uh, going to a to a, a, a physiotherapist. Um, as many you may not may know or may not know, um, depending on how, how how closely you watch my videos or whatever. Uh, in 2018, I got diagnosed with diabetes, type two diabetes, and when I got diagnosed, I was. It was a real shock for me. Here I was, 33, and I went into went in for a typical checkup, and um, the doctor told me I had diabetes. So, as part of uh, my diabetes, I was referred to a physiotherapist because, along with diet and changing what you eat and watching the carbs and more vegetables, you have to do um, physical activity. So the first therapist I went to, it was all about moving your body and exercising several times a day. But that therapist left and this new therapist um, who who took over when I went to see her uh, a few weeks ago she said her philosophy is totally awesome uh, she said it's not so much about moving your body and exercising she said uh, it's about moving with intention and um, and then she um, the exercises she gave me I I didn't get her to write them down so I, I was like all stressed that I was like oh I forgot those exercises I don't know and blah 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 so when I went to see her yesterday she said to me um I said I'm sorry I didn't do the exercises I feel so bad and she said Rachel she said you don't have to feel bad at least you're making progress she's like I'm just giving and she said something else, and she and I said, oh, and she said, Rachel, I'm just giving you feedback to make you better. Um, so I'm not saying you did anything wrong or anything. She said, I'm just um, giving you feedback, and and she said, Rachel, and she asked me to lift my arms so I was lifting my arms like this like I usually lift my arms she said no no the proper way to lift your arms is like this without bending your elbow or out straight slow and doing it intentionally like and here's what she said she said it's not about um do just doing it for the sake of doing it she's like it's it's about doing it she called it mindfully i called it doing it with intention and I call it do, doing it with intention. And 
and as she was talking to me, I was going through all these negative thoughts. Oh my god, I should have called to get the exercises. Oh my gosh, I didn't do the exercises that she wanted me to. And I realized all the negative talk I was talking about myself. And as I was driving home on the wheels, friends, that's the um, disabled transportation. Um, as I was driving home on the wheels, friends, I began to cycle through all the negative talk I was talking about myself. I'm like, oh, this and that, all this terrible stuff I was saying about myself. And, um, coming from the therapist, um, and the Lord said to me, uh, did I, did I talk about myself like that? And I said, no, Lord, you didn't. Um, he said, if you want to be like Christ, you need to A, move with intention, and B, endeavor to speak about yourself the way I spoke about myself. And it's like what the physiotherapist uh, told me. She said, it's not about just raising your arms. She said, it's about doing it properly. And sometimes in life, we tend to just do things to get them done. And we don't do it the proper way. So that's why we hurt ourselves and we hurt other people. Because we're so focused on the goal that we really just want to get there and get to the next thing. But, but she says, I don't care if you can lift your hands all the way up to the air. I want you to use proper body mechanics. I want you to do it properly. And I thought, oh, wow, and I, and I was so excited um, about this and what she was showing me. And I just began to think of people who just uh, achieve goals and they're like, I have to get there. I have to get there by the age of 25. I have to uh, be married by the age of 27. I have to go to school, I have to get my doctorate, I have to do this. But they're not, they're doing it, but they're not doing it with intention. They're doing it because it's something they desire and everything, but they're not doing it intentionally. And the difference um, with doing it with intention, intention requires structure. So you don't, when you do things with intention, you're careful and you're uh, measured. You take, you take measured steps. You don't just rush into things. And there are times when God will ask you to just move. And, that, and there are also times that he will ask you, to move slower and to do things, not just to do them, but to do them the right way and do and know the intention of something uh, when you're doing them, when you're doing things. The physiotherapist said to me, Rachel, it's not about how high you can lift your arms. It's that you're using the pro proper muscles and doing it properly. And she's like, the more you do it, the easier it will be in, and you will get to that place that you need to be 
without straining yourself and using proper body mechanics. So I just want to want to um, talk to you tonight about moving with intention and 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 talking to yourself the way God talked to Himself and taking on what He says about you. Um, when I when I found myself, um, when I found myself getting kind of defensive, well, I'm trying and I can't really do that. She's like, yes, you can, because she was showing me after that arm exercise, she was showing me a hand exercise, how to flip my hand over. And I said, I can't do that. It's hard. She's like, yes, you can. Your hand has the ability to do it because I just did it. You just have to be intentional about doing it. About, he, she's like, it's like, she's like, it doesn't matter how quick you do it. It matters that you have the intention to do it. And slowly and surely you'll get there. This goes beyond, um, this goes beyond exercising. This goes beyond anything. Because a lot of people just do things for the sake of doing them. They do things because their friends are doing it. They do things because it's what's expected of them. They do things because it's what, as uh, it's who they are. But the question is, what is your intention in doing this thing? It doesn't matter if you do it fast or slow. It matters what is your intention? What is the reason you're doing this thing? What is the reason you're going to school? What is the reason that you're, you know, in such a hurry to get married? Um, and because of this hurry, you're going from bad relationship to bad relationship. Is that, is it because you want to uh, impress your friends with your new husband or because you have an inch that you need to scratch or is it because you want it, you have something to minister uh, to a spouse to make their lives better or do you just want to it's cuffing season I'm lonely I'm sexually frustrated so I want to get married um, so what is your intention of of to do this thing um, so it's all about intention uh, to when I'm talking about um, when I'm talking about uh, doing things for your life why are you doing this particular thing when you find out why you're doing it, it becomes not easier, but once you know your why, the way becomes not, not easy, but smoother. And if it gets rocky, that's okay. You know why you're doing it, so it's easy uh, to, to get back on the path. If you don't know why you're doing it or the reason you're doing a certain thing is not your reason, um, then it would be harder to get back on the path. Um, sometimes we uh, do certain things or participate in certain endeavors because that's what we're expected to do or that's what our mother did or that's what our father did you need to focus on what God put in you and you need to pray about the intention of what you're doing in your life right now move very intentionally right now in your life 
because when you move intentionally, people will see that and be gravitated to and gravitate to that and to you. And when people see focus, they will not only gravitate to that, they will want to be a part of that. The right, when the right people see focus, they will want to be a part of that. Um, and you will have a more productive life. When you have focus in your life, when you have um, steps designed to take you where you want to go, um, your life will become more manageable. Could, could the reason your life is so out of control now is that you you're not focused you, you're not focused on one thing you're foc you're you're scattered into so many different areas um, that you don't know what to focus on focus creates clarity let me say that again focus creates clarity and without focus there is no clarity so if you want clarity about what the Lord would have you do in this certain season of your life, ask um, for focus. He will give you the focus and focus will create clarity and clarity will create action and action will create destiny. Um, and also, um, when you have focus in your life, then you can, can put everything into that thing. And then when you throw your whole, whole self at, at something, when you throw your whole self at your goal or your dream, you'll be much more productive and, and the people are around you will be much more effect, affected by your dream and it will be much more um, drilled down, it will be much more structured. If you're focused on on several different things, you you won't know where to where to place your energy you'll be like I need to have energies here I need to do this I need to do that and you won't get anything done you'll be jack of all trades but master of none master one thing and then once you complete that one thing then you can go on to another goal um and the last thing I want to talk about is um, how to stop the negative self-talk. Like I said, um, in the physiotherapist office, uh, I, um, I was talking to myself in my head very negatively. I, w I was so shocked about how negatively I was talking about myself to myself and I went home I was like this needs to change um, um, and the way to change negative talk is to go uh, to the source which I think is the Word of God and adopt what God says about me he says, I'm a royal priesthood and a holy nation. He says, I am fearfully and wonderfully made. He says, I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength. He said, he is with me always, even to the end of the age. So if he, the God of the universe, says that about me, who am I to argue? 
Who am I to say, no, I'm just this, I'm just that. You're not just nothing. You are a king and a queen that God created. Um, I was listening to a preacher the other day, and he said this one thing. He said, you come through your, your parents, but from God. So I came through Chris and Evelyn Esdale in 1984, but I came from God. And if I come from God, does it, don't I have the attributes, the traits of my father? Um, so when a child is born, they have uh, half of the mother and half of the father uh, that make up their DNA at conception. So it's as in the natural, so it is in the spiritual. If I came from my father, aren't I supposed to have the DNA of my, of my father? So why am I talking so negatively about myself when my father says I am, I am fearfully and wonderfully made? Um, we need to talk ki kinder to ourselves and about ourselves. And the Lord also brought to me when I was driving home uh, what he said, um, his confidence about himself. He was not arrogant. Jesus was never arrogant, but he was confident. He had God confidence and he, as he went to the cross and they said are, are you the king of the Jews he said yes I am and he said it confidently without apology and um, he just spoke about himself confidently and when he knew that people that didn't matter to him were talking about him, he just let them talk. He didn't try to dumb down who he was. He didn't try to say anything, oh well, this and that. He was sure of who he was and he didn't waste his time with people who didn't understand what, or who he was, or what he was there to do. And that's what we need to take. Too many of us care what people think and about what we're here to do. Listen, the only uh, beings that you have to be accountable to, really, is God Almighty and yourself. I'm not saying that you have the right to be rude and uh, you don't need accountability or you don't need community. I'm big proponents of that. But at the end of the day, the only approval you need to get is the Lord's approval, which you already have, and yours. If God has told you to do something. Do it. You don't need anybody's yes or no. You, you, you may need somebody's counsel. You will need somebody's counsel because you can't do anything alone. But God will direct you to whose counsel you need. God will direct you to the tools you need according to your skills, according to your personality, according to what you are endeavoring to do. He will direct you to the right people and resources.
and you'll find what you need when you need it. But you don't need people who are going to be nay naysayers on your dream or your vision. But you do, as I said before, need wise counsel. And wise counsel will give you constructive feedback. Maybe they'll say, um, that's a wonderful vision and a wonderful dream, but not as you're a beginner, that may not be for you yet. And they'll show, a wise counsel will not always tell you how, how to do it, but they'll show you how. They'll, they'll not tell you no, but they'll show you how they did it and they'll show you how to do it. That's how you know you've got wise counsel. Um, and a lot of people go to people with their, with their visions and their dreams that don't know anything about helping them and don't mean them any don't mean them any good stop going to people with your visions and your dreams who don't know what they're talking about who don't know anything know anything but but how to put people down and how to destroy uh people with their mouths go to people that know your industry know what you want to do, know your kind of bent, and can guide you in your endeavors. We need a community, we all need a community, but we need a community that lifts us up um, away with this cra crab mentality to bring us down. We need a community to lift us up. And I pray that this was of help to you. Um, thank you. Have a good evening. I just can't give up I've come too far from where I started from. Nobody told me that the road would be easy, and I don't believe it's gotten this far to leave me. I just can't. Give up now. I've come too far from where I started from. Nobody told me the road would be easy, and I don't believe he's got me this far. I don't believe. He's not this far, but I don't believe he's brought you this far. Sister, don't believe he's brought you this far to leave you. Don't quit. There is someone listening to me right now. You've been working on that thing for years, and you're about to quit. I'm here to tell you as a beacon of light. Don't quit. You'll get there. Don't quit. You make your little engine, but, but you can do it. You can do it. It's hard. I know. It's time away from your kids. I know. It's time away from your husband. I know. But don't quit. Never quit. Because the world needs what's inside of you, brother. The world needs what's inside of you, sister. 
And if you quit, they won't have it. The Lord doesn't waste anything. All those nights, all those late nights, the Lord is not wasting them. All those tears you cried, the Lord is not wasting them. He's going to use them for your story. He's already using them for your story. You don't know who you're inspiring. You don't know who you're inspiring by your actions. You don't know who's watching you. There are people watching you going to school with three children. And, you know, there are people watching you and you're inspiring them and you, and you don't even know people at work are seeing you and going wow i can i can do that as well you're inspiring people by your tenacity you're inspiring people by your bravery and you don't even know it don't quit i don't care what the devil says i don't care how hard it is just do not quit you can't quit on the on the generation that needs your wisdom. There's a generation coming up that needs your wisdom on your particular career. There's a generation that needs your wisdom on business. There's a generation that needs your wisdom on beauty. Don't quit. I don't care who's not watching, who is watching. I don't care, care about nasty comments from family or friends. You can't quit because there are people coming behind you that need your wisdom. We need you, beloved. You can't quit. You have to set your face like Flint and say, I will never give up. If I have to die doing this, I'll do it. If I have to miss time with my kids, I will do it. If I have to, you know, whatever I have to do, I'll do this. But don't quit. The sacrifice is worth it. The sacrifice is worth it. Because one day you'll stand on a platform or maybe just be talking to a friend who is in, who is in the place that you are now. And you could tell them, baby, I did it. I did it. And if you really want to do it, here's how. And you can give them the tools. And you can be a mentor and a light to them. But don't quit. You cannot quit on what God has given you to do. You cannot quit on what God has given you to do. God is giving you to do. You cannot quit. And it's hard, I know, but it's worth it. It's building muscle. I, to I told you this. Uh, spiritual muscle is built by resistance. When a person works out, the more they, there's resistance, the more it builds muscle and the more it makes them stronger. So this is making you stronger. This too is is building your spiritual muscle. This too is building your persistence. It's building your fortitude. Don't stay in a corner. You can cry for a while but not forever. Get up and know that greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Have a great night. Bye.